When you arrive at the donor centre, you would be required to complete a questionnaire. The self-exclusion questionnaire is really to look at your health and your lifestyle. Once the questions are answered honestly, you are required to go through a one-on-one -on -one interview with the nurse to ensure that all your answers are in fact correct and we will have to check your iron levels and your blood pressure. The importance of the questionnaire is really to assess the safety of the blood, which is the key priority for the South African National Blood Service. Good morning. Hi, How are you? The phlebotomist will then take you through the process of inserting the needle and making sure it's a comfortable process. Just give the fist like that. And we are done. All the blood is labelled with a barcode. This barcode is put on our honesty card. Should you have a change of heart in terms of the questions you've answered, you could give us a call on our toll-free number to let us know what your barcode is and we will be able to pull that batch out of the system so it actually does not reach the patient. Thank you very much. Eh? Thanks very much. Once a unit of blood is collected, it is put into a box that is temperature controlled and is then transported in a temperature control vehicle to our testing labs. The little vials of blood that are taken goes to our testing department and the unit of blood goes to our processing department for the next step of the processing and testing. This is the section where we test for the viral markers, for virology. We test for HIV, hepatitis C and hepatitis B. Everything is automated. The machine will read the barcode and then it will say in position one, this is the unit number. The nucleic amplification test is a sensitive test where we're able to pick up viruses in the shortest window period. And we test for HIV, hepatitis B and C and syphilis for every single unit of blood donated by a donor every single time they donate. Very few countries in the world actually do this. And the reason for this is to ensure that in a country where viruses like HIV is so high, the safety of the blood is ensured by making sure that we test single units so that we're able to match that unit to a donor versus pulling units together and then probably not knowing which donor's unit of blood might have been infected. As blood arrives at our processing centre, it is received by the staff members. The temperature of the blood is taken to make sure it's within a required temperature. From there, they will package it into holders that will fit into a centrifuge. It will be put into a centrifuge and it will be spun down. The purpose of that is to actually separate the three components that is in the blood which is of importance to us. When the spinning has been completed, they will start the processing of it, of the separation, through OptiPress machines. These machines separate it in the red cells at the bottom, the buffy coat in the middle, and the plasma at the top. And the red cells will be dispatched to the blood banks, the plasma will be frozen, the buffy coats will be used to make platelets out of it. We have fridges at various hospitals and blood banks to ensure that blood gets to patients in the shortest space of time. The blood is received, it's scanned, and then we store it in our different fridges, which is temperature monitored. It's kept uh, between two to six degrees, and the lifespan for red cell products is 42 days. Plasmas, which must be kept frozen at all times. The lifespan of this is a year, and we store them according to expiry as well. Platelets are group specific, like any other products, and the uh, expiry date of these, the shelf life is five days. This must be kept agitated so that they remain alive. This is the compatibility testing that we perform at the blood bank to check if the donor blood is compatible to our patients before we issue. We have about 437 hospitals that have emergency fridges that keep blood to ensure that we cover a radius of hospitals in the event that blood is needed urgently. But of course, all of this is only possible if there is adequate blood available. With our emergencies, patients lose a lot of blood. And just by transfusing patients' fluids and doing the basic resuscitation gets you to a certain point. But as we know, you cannot live without blood. And we, as the doctors, are the ones that administrate the blood. But the real heroes and the real people that are saving the lives are the people donating the blood. If I could thank every single one of them, I would because they don't realize how much of a difference they do make in that small um, sacrifice that they make in donating blood.
dealing with children, I have to look after children with blood disorders as well as children with cancer. Big F. Uh, good boy. The donations of blood and platelets allow me to give my patients chemotherapy. It allows me to stop my patients from bleeding. It allows me to get my patients the appropriate surgical procedures that they require. But I think most importantly, it allows me to allow them to live. And that is not an over-exaggeration. Again, from my patients who are nameless and who are faceless to the donors, I'd like to say thank you. Because on a daily basis, I am ordering urgent blood or urgent platelets. Thank you uh, for uh, all of you. Their gift that they give is priceless. It's the gift of life.